Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you guys for joining us on this channel today. Today I will be looking at the Akai Fire with FL Studio 20 for Mac. Last video I did a brief demonstration about using the step sequencer, which the Akai Fire is modeled after. In this particular video I'm going to continue that a little bit and talk about another mode that it has, which is drum mode. And drum mode's really cool for people who like using FPC Slice X among other things. So I have this really short project here with a few drum sounds. I have an empty Slice X and an empty Serato. I'm gonna give you some pointers and tips on the best way to kind of approach using each of these. So first things first, in this particular drum mode, which is the third button across the bottom on the controller, you have a few modes you can enable by clicking inward. And what happened is you'll get Omni mode, FPC left, FPC centered, Slice X mode, the one that's really cool is Omni Channel, which you'll hear all my drum single shots as I strike. So what this is cool for is for those of you who like to record directly into the piano roll or step sequencer live. So whether you're trying to do lo-fi and you need no quantize, all you would do is set your snap to none and then play each of those sounds individually. If you want, you can go to one of the FPC modes and use the FPC and do something similar. Me personally, since I've been using FL Studio for a long time, I've been very used to this particular Omni mode ideal. It's just cooler for me because I'm gonna send most of the stuff in the piano roll anyway, especially if you wanna edit and do triplets, which this control does not do yet. It does not have a, a way of affecting note repeats or step sequencing uh, triplet uh, variables. Until it does though, this will be fine. So because of the kind of driver I'm using, I'm gonna have a certain type of latency. So what I wanna do is right click on my record, make sure record quantize is set to note start time in particular. And then on this, I can set it to quarter beats if I wish. I'm gonna increase my tempo to about 140 or so. And I'm going to turn my metronome on so I can have something to play along to. What I'm going to do is record a very simple pattern in real time. And each note is going to be quantized and it's going to show up in our grid. I'm going to hit record on the controller. When I'm ready, I'm going to hit play. So you can see it's recorded into the piano roll in this particular instance. However, if we switch back into step mode, you will see the steps on your controller, which is really cool. And you can go back and forth between them, modify them, add extra notes if you need to. Although you'll see it in this view, it still qualifies as a step view, which I think is really neat. So I'm gonna play that back real quick, make sure to quantize or the input quantize was set correctly. As you can see, if I could do this live without input quantize and just do something like boom bap or lo-fi, this particular mode would be really cool, especially uh, if the size of these pads don't bother you, because to be honest with you, my hands dwarf this particular controller, but it works if you work it. So next thing I wanna do is dive into the Slice X mode. So we're still in drum mode, we're gonna click in, and we're gonna switch it to Slice X mode. I'm gonna go ahead and select my Slice X channel using Alt. It's the second from the bottom, the bottom is Serato. And Slice 6 is good for a lot of things, just regular sample chopping if you like chopping up soul or loops, or in a lot of cases with drum beats, is really cool for like the fills, hi-hat loops, and things like that. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to use a fill for this type of beat, so I'm going to drag and drop it from my browser and put it into the Slice 6 Edison view, I call it, or waveform view. So once we have that dragged into Slice 6, what we can do is right-click this right here, do medium auto slicing, that will give us different markers. In this case, we can see this marker is a little bit too short, so I'll move that over manually. Um, at the moment, this controller does not control markers, and I guess my idea would probably be that there should be a way for you to select a marker with one of these encoders, and then use a different encoder to move it back and forth. That would be really cool since it doesn't have like a, a waveform display built into the actual controller yet, or at least not in this model. So it automatically dumped that data. I'm gonna remove it. Now the controller itself, it's controlling Slice X. We're gonna push in, it's saying Slice X, and you'll know it's Slice X because all the pads will be blue. And what'll happen is each slice is triggered starting from the bottom row, and it works its way up depending on how many slices you have. In this particular example, technically we only have about four or five of them, so these should all be it. So I'm ready, I'm gonna redo record, I'm gonna hit play when I'm ready, lay this particular pattern down, and we should be good to go. And in the articulator, I want to put this low pass filter on. So 
So it's a custom fill, nothing crazy, real simple. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that real quick. I'm gonna clone it and I'm gonna bring in a hi-hat loop and that one automatically cut itself. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure it's only the one bar where my drums are. So it's real simple and effective. There's a lot of fun that could be had with that, especially when using slice X with drums and breaks and things like that. For chopping samples, I prefer Serato because you can load a whole full song in there, do some random chops and everything has through and cut mode. So I'm gonna show you that. So I'm gonna take this one pattern here, draw it to measure. So I'm gonna switch my snap to line. And what I'm gonna do with my controller is hit down on pattern, create a pattern number two, go back to this particular view here, Let's see where we are on the channels. I'm gonna hit Alt, hit that last one. That's gonna have Serato loaded. And to use this particular mode, we're not gonna be in drum mode, we're gonna be in note mode. And I'm gonna show you how this works because this is really cool. So I'm gonna hit note mode and this particular mode gives us our scales and our keys. What I'm gonna do is press in on select. You're gonna see it says dual keyboard, which is the current mode. I'm gonna switch it all the way to the end where it just says chromatic mode. And that's all you need for a Serato sample. There's no uh, drum, a preset for it. So I'm gonna go to Serato, pick a sample. So the sample is loaded. Looks like it's some Luther Vandross. This is random, I haven't heard it yet. I'm gonna hit set random. And what'll happen is in Serato sample in this particular chromatic mode, um, the first step all the way to the end is each and every pad in Serato. So it's really cool to have all these mapped out with Serato. Like if I'm using like my Akai Mini or something like that, sometimes you gotta move the octaves around and kind of find where your range is. And then it kind of ends in the middle, like, like on D sharp or something. And that's kind of awkward when you're playing. So it just being all solid steps per step, that's in Serato sample is very useful for me. And I've been chopping, when I do sample beats, I've been using this particular controller instead of the MIDI controller ever since. I go to Serato, select all, put my filter on if I need it. So that sounds pretty smooth. So that chop is an A-flat minor, and this will bring me to my last tip for this particular controller. Now what we can do while we're still in note mode, we were using chromatic, but what we can do is switch this down to a minor scale. In this case, I'm gonna do Aeolian. It's right before Locrian, if you're ever looking for it. And we're gonna set that to A flat, which is G sharp. And what'll happen is that'll make these highlighted keys to root note, depending on which track we're on. Let's put my 808 at the bottom of the selected four. Hold Alt, select that last one. We're lit. And then we can just record with it. So yeah, that's that. That's using the Akai Fire to make a beat with FL Studio 20, using the drum mode to let us play our drums live, all at once using the Omni mode, also switching it to the Slice X pattern so we can customize our fills or our hi-hat loops, and then switching it to Note mode, which allowed us to use Chromatic mode to control every pad in Serato across the bottom, and then of course switching it to the key that we found in Serato to actually play out our root notes for our bass line. Real simple, easy workflow. I see a lot of people trying to give this controller flack, but with all of these, dare we say, training wheels, I think it's really dope. Like, how can you complain? Like, I haven't had to touch a MIDI controller this whole project, and most beats are just this deep, you know? I'm not going crazy with the chords, and if I needed to, I can. 
Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two from this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave them in the box below. If you're not following us on social media, be sure to do that. I'm at MG the Future on Instagram and Twitter. Be sure to also follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace.